Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with the essential classical music list from 1951 or 53, or when was this? 53. 1953. Here we go. 1,000 recommended recordings, by the way, are in here. A thousand. Can you believe it? That's, I, I think that's amazing. Yes, 1953 by Howard Taubman, the music critic of the New York Times. One of you pointed out that Taubman in, in German means deaf person, which is kind of fascinating that he was a music critic. I'm sure the irony was not lost on him. So let's take a look at what we have for orchestral music. We did the 16 most important or top things, right? But let's start with, okay, the basic list. Each of these chapters, it has the basic list. A is the basic list. And then there's list B, the more complete list for a more complete collection. And so we're going we're gonna to do A and B. But now we're going to do orchestral A, the basic list. You're ready? I don't know if we're going to get through it all, but let's see how far we get. Bach, the Brandenburg Concertos with Haas. It just says Haas. I mean, I'm not going to get into who Haas was. Or all that. I'm just telling you, on Westminster. There you go, Westminster. Piano Concerto in D minor by Bach with Lucas Foss on Decca. Ooh. Um, suites numbers two and three with Carl Munchinger on London, which is Decca in the U.S., um, London was, was Decca. Decca was London in the U.S. There, I got that. The Two Violin Concerto with Stern and Schneider on Columbia. And the E Major Violin Concerto with Shimon Goldberg on Decca. Then we have Beethoven. Now, Beethoven's easy. It's mostly Toscanini. Because these guys were huge Toscanini, Toscanini fans. And 53 was Toscanini was at his legendary peak. And the Victor recordings were coming out on LPs, starting to on LPs. Oh boy. But there are some interesting things. You've got the Egmont and Coriolanus overtures with Van Bynum on London. Yay! We just talked about Van Bynum. And the Leonora overtures and Fidelio overture with Hermann Scherchen on Westminster. Ooh, that's an interesting choice, isn't it? You wonder how many options there were in that music with them to pick Scherchen. Then you've got all five piano concertos. Number one with Gulda, two, three, and four with Backhaus, and number five with Walter Gieseking. Those are all on London or Columbia in the case of Gieseking, and that's just been reissued. Um, it's over here. I got this big Gieseking box we have to talk about. Then we've got Symphonies 1 through 9 with Toscanini, and it says Victor, seven separate discs. In other words, yeah, LPs had arrived. That was the new thing in those days. And the violin concerto it just says Heifetz. That's Heifetz Toscanini. That's the one they're talking about. It's not a very good Beethoven violin concerto, actually. Um, and then we have Berlioz, Harold Nidalee with Beecham on Columbia, the Symphony Fantastique with Ormandy on Columbia. This is going to be a very American list, which you might expect. It's what was available in the United States. And in those days, you know, labels did not really have international distribution the way they do now. Um, never mind digital, whatever, but I mean, you know, with distributors, <laughs> you know, simultaneous international releases and things. I mean, none of that existed. The, the labels were, had local offices if they were international labels or they were local labels. And so, and so the local orchestras or homegrown orchestras were very much the ones people heard. And so this will be, for some of you in Europe and all those guys, some of this may be very curious because yes, it's very, very heavily weighted toward the American market. Brahms, so we've got, let's see, Academic Festival Overture and the Tragic Overture with Van Kempen and Lehman on Decca back in the days when they released albums with, you know, two-sided albums or 78s by different conductors doing different things, which is kind of unusual. Uh, the Haydn Variations with Toscanini. Piano Concertos 1 with Sirkin on Columbia, fabulous, and Backhaus on London. Numbers 1, Symphonies 1, 2, and 4 with Toscanini. And number three, they knew Toscanini sucked at number three. Number three is with Kusevitsky. And then the Violin Concerto with Heifetz again on Victor. Of course, why not? The Brook Violin Concerto with Heifetz. You think there was going to be anybody but Heifetz? But you wonder, you see, now we see how these people got their reputations, right? Because... They were the ones, and they were hammered home over and over and over, and that's what happened. Chopin, piano concerto number one, um, Horshavsky on Vox, 
And number two, with Guillemar no face on Vox. Hmm. You think there were no other choices for those? But I, it's not that these aren't good, but it's just interesting. They didn't sound good, of course, but it shows you just how limited some things were in terms of, you know, all the things you might have gotten. Debussy, Afternoon of a Fawn, Image, La Mer, and Nocturnes, all with Anser May, all on London. <laughs> there was no point in picking anybody else back then. Dvorak, The Slavonic Dances with Václav Talish, The Complete Slavonic Dances. And then the New World Symphony with George Sell, Columbia, this mono one. Isn't that remarkable? Just those two works. I mean, that's it. Slavonic Dances, the New World Symphony, that was Dvorak. The Franck Symphony with Ormandy on Columbia, why not? Gershwin, of course, an American in Paris with Bernstein on RCA, one of his earliest recordings. The Concerto in F with Oscar Levant on Columbia and the Rhapsody in Blue with Oscar Levant on Columbia. And then we've got Grieg, the Pierre Gint Suites with Arthur Fiedler and the Piano Concerto with Dino Lipati, a classic that was in those days on Columbia, not EMI. EMI was licensing its stuff through Columbia. That's where all the Walter Gieseking stuff is, Columbia, but it's, now it's Warner. So there you go. We see a little of the history there. Handel Concerti Grossi with Bush, Fritz Bush on Columbia, four, four discs. Organ Concertos 13 through 16 with Hölderlein on Vox. And then the water music with Lehmann on Decca. Fritz Lehmann, wasn't it Fritz? Something like that. He did a lot of stuff. Harvey Lehman, whatever. Haydn, symphonies 38 and 39 with Sternberg on the Haydn Society. So they felt obligated to do some, some early Sturm und Drang type Haydn's and there weren't many. Oh no, there weren't. Then we've got Symphony 88 with Bush on HMV. Number 92, the Oxford with Sell, great, on Columbia. Then 94 with Beecham on Columbia. The military with Scherchen. Not the stereo one, unfortunately, the older, more staid one. Um, number 101, the clock with Toscanini. The drum roll with Beecham on Columbia. And the London Symphony with Scherchen on Westminster. It's a pretty nice selection of Haydn symphonies. And it's kind of remarkable how much there was out there by some really fine and sometimes quirky musicians even if they were not texturally accurate. List, Lay Preludes with Ormandy. Piano Concerto Number 1 with Arthur Rubinstein. That's very good. Absolutely. Then look at this, Mahler 4 with Bruno Walter. They, if they were going to do something by Mahler, you did the fourth, and it was the Walter, and that was it. And there were other choices out there, and we may find some more in the expanded list coming up later, but, you know, not too bad. Mendelssohn, Fingal's Cave Overture with Lehman on Decca. Midsummer Night's Dream music with Toscanini. Well, he always did that wonderfully. Piano Concerto Number no. One with Maura Limpany on Victor. Symphonies Three and Four. The third is the Scotch with Willem Steinberg. Yeah, very good on Capital. And Number Four with Kusevitsky, Boston. The Violin Concerto with Fritz Kreisler on Victor. So there you go. Mozart. Oh, lots of Mozart. Okay, Ina Klein and Nach music. Von Karajan on Columbia. I mean, that was on. HMV. But Carrion was, was just getting started in those days. You know, that's really kind of amazing. Piano Concerto number nine with Hess on Columbia. Myra Hess. Um, number 20 with Schnabel. That's a famous one. Uh, and 24. He did both of the minor key ones. There we go. Number 22 with Rudolf Serkin, which was fabulous on Columbia. Um, number 25 with, with Fisher. I think it's Edwin, not Annie. It's Edwin Fisher on HMV. Um, Piano Concerto 27 with Horshovsky. The Symphonia Concertante with the Fuchs brother and sister on Decca. The Hofner Symphony with Toscanini. Ugh. Um, <laughs> yeah. Number 36, the Lids with Bush. That's better. Uh, Symphony 38 with Beecham on Columbia. 39 with Joseph Cripps on London. Number 40 with Beecham and 41 with Beecham. And then Violin Concertos 4 and 5 with Chrysler and 4 and Heifetz in 5. Not shabby. Mussorgsky pictures in an exhibition with Guido Cantelli. The up-and-coming Guido Cantelli. Remember who was shortly to, to pass away in an airplane crash. 
um, the successor to Toscanini. Rachmaninoff, piano concerto number two, played by Rachmaninoff. A dreadful, awful, icky, off sound, but wow, what a performance. And the symphony number two is the old Ormandy Columbia, a mono one with all the cuts. It's beautiful. Okay, Daphnis and Chloe by Ravel. En May, naturally, it's French. It has to be En May. It's French. En May. En French. In 1953, that's what you did. Could have been Kusevitsky, though. I don't know. Okay. Um, let's see. Scheherazade. Ormandy. Yes, of course. Schubert. Rosamund excerpts. Dixon on Westminster. Yeah, right. Symphony Number no. 5 with von Bynum on London. Number 8, The Unfinished with Toscanini. Also not really that special. Number 9 with Bruno Walter. Columbia. There he is. Schumann, the Manfred Overture with Toscanini. The Piano Concerto with Dino Lupati. Yeah. Baby. And these were new back then. Let's not forget. Brand spanking new. Symphony number no. one, the Spring Symphony with Anser May. Number two was Schurich on London. It's not that Schurich box on Decca. The Rhenish with Bruno Walter. And the fourth with Monteux on Victor. How's that for a nice little Schumann cycle? by all kinds of different people. Sibelius, there's a lot of Sibelius. It shows how, how highly regarded Sibelius was in the UK and in the United States, that there is so much Sibelius symphony stuff in here. Sibelius symphony number one was Sixteen Erling on Mercury. Number two with Kusevitsky on Victor. That was an absolute classic in its day. Numbers three and seven with Sixteen Erling on Mercury. Number four with Sixteen Erling on Mercury. Um, the Violin Concerto with Heifetz, of course, he owned it. And that's it. It's kind of interesting that you don't get the Fifth Symphony here. Of course, you don't get the Sixth either. <laughs> but the Fifth, I don't know, it should have been there, shouldn't it? No tone poems, just symphonies. Sibelius was a symphonist. Mm. Yeah, a symphonist. Then we've got Smetna, the Moldau, and from Bohemia's Meadows and Forest, the old Zell recordings, yes, on Columbia. And some Johann Strauss with with. Free Choi, Free Choi, yes, and Joseph Cripps, and Arthur Fiedler, waltzes and goodies, you know, it, it's all that stuff. Richard Strauss, also a much bigger name than he is now as a symphonic composer. I think as an opera composer, his standard has gone up. As an orchestral composer, his standard has gone down. But you've got Don Juan with Bruno Walter, Don Quixote with Reiner. That's the Pittsburgh one. Not the, I think it's the Pittsburgh one, right? The one in Columbia. Ein Held in Leben with Mengelberg, the remake not the RCA Victor you know, earlier with the New York Phil, which actually sounded better. Uh, Till Oil and Spiegel with Zell. Yeah, terrific. And Death and Transfiguration with Walter again on Columbia. Then we've got Stravinsky, the Fireberg Suite with Stokowski. Oh, totally reorchestrated. It's funny, they recommended that in their 16 Essentials, right? And uh, let's see, Petrushka with Anser May and the Rite of Spring with Anser May. Those were really not very good. Mm -mm. You know, none of them were very good in the 50s because orchestras were still struggling to play the works. So, you know, that's what you could get. That was probably the best you could do. Tchaikovsky, the Nutcracker Suite with Des Ormières. Wow. The Piano Concerto with Solomon. Mm. And the Romeo and Juliet with Guido Cantelli, which is terrific. Swan Lake with Des Ormières because that was on the same disc as well. It's a different disc, actually, is the, the Nutcracker, but there was a series. Symphonies 4 and 5 with Kusevitsky, who was a Tchaikovsky specialist. Number 6 with Ormandy and the Violin Concerto. Guess who's doing the Violin Concerto? Heifetz. Is there any other violinist in here? I don't know. Vivaldi, the four, Concerti Grossi with Reinhardt on Vox. Three discs. That's all it says. The Four Seasons with Munchinger on London. Wagner stuff. Um, let's see, Lohengrin preludes to Acts 1 and 2 with Joachim on Decca. Meister Singer Overture at Act 3 prelude with Knoppert's Bush on London. Parsifal prelude and Good Friday music with Toscanini on Victor. And by the way, when I said Decca for Joachim, that was Decca. That was an import, not a domestic production. So the Parsifal prelude and Good Friday music was Toscanini. The Siegfried Idol, Toscanini. The Tannhäuser Overture in Wiesberg music, Stakowski, yay. Uh, Tristan and Isolde Prelude and Love Death with Steinberg on Capitol. Weber, the Orienti Overture, Oberon Overture, Preciosa Overture with Karl Böhm on London. And that is the essential list. I mean, the basic list, the basic, basic, basic list. Do you think it's basic enough? Not basic, you know, too basic? I mean, what do you think? Kind of interesting, isn't it? 
A lot hasn't changed, has it? It really hasn't. But some of the choices are interesting. And what's interesting for me, of course, is, you know, what options were available back then and which ones they chose. Um, it's kind of kind of amazing because a lot of this stuff is getting reissued now. So you can see, I mean, you can actually hear what they chose and see how sort of scabrous some of the <laughs> performance standards were back then, um, especially in modern composers like Stravinsky. What's also interesting, you may note, there is no Bruckner. None. Not a single thing. Not a glimmer. Mm. Interesting, isn't it? So keep on listening, folks. We're going to do Orchestra B next, the expanded list. And the expanded list is quite expanded. It's very interesting. You'll see. So thank you so much for joining me. Take care. <laughs>